Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. This update will take us into the meteorological winter, but is the weather paying any attention to the calendar or not? Well, as usual, I'm going to start by taking a look at the view across Japan, the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 21st. And at the outset, things are somewhat different to how they have been during much of the autumn. High pressure having more influence, so there is less uh, rain around. Now, as I run the sequence, the thing to look is to the north because the high pressure starts building northwestwards and much colder Arctic air plunges down across the UK through Thursday, Friday and the weekend. Indeed, for a time of could be some wintry showers there in the north and the east, so significantly colder than it has been recently. As I run the sequence forward, what we see is high pressure stays close by. The core of the cold is really going into continental Europe. Then things become a little bit messy, but high pressure continues to have a good deal of influence, although at times outbreaks of rain do move into the northwest of the UK, finishing here on Wednesday, and the yellow shade is indicating the possibility of some heavy rain actually in the northwest. It's mostly dry though across southern and central regions, so a colder spell of weather seems to be on the way, but quite a lot of uncertainty about how things will develop after the initial plunge from the north. Here's the jet stream and upper air temperature sequence. For the same time period, the blue shading shows the cold air, the orange is the mild or warm air. Remember, this is at about 1500 meters above sea level. So as I run it, the thing to look, keep an eye on is it's blue shading to the north. It quickly moves southwards. As I said, the core of it is going into continental Europe, but it does, it does move down across the UK for a time, but later on, the greens return, so temperatures aloft at least, returning back towards the average, but that does not necessarily correspond to values down at the ground level, for example, if high pressure stays in control, as seems to be being suggested. So let's have a look at some of the values which may be likely down at the ground level. Forecast maximums here on Wednesday, double figures more or less across the country, maybe a little bit colder there in the south as the high pressure still has some influence, keeping things quite calm and overcast and maybe a little bit chilly. Forwards though to Friday and at this point we've got the Arctic air moving southwards so it's colder. Single figures in the south, eights or nines, close to the south coast perhaps, but head into the northern half of Britain and it's significantly chillier, much colder and as well as daytime temperatures dipping, the risk of frost looks like it's going to be becoming quite widespread through the weekend at least. Forecast minimums here from the UKV model on uh, Friday night into Saturday morning. The blue shading indicates the frost risk extending down across most of the UK. In fact, values of minus six have been shown in the north locally in a few places. So sharp frost is possible as we go through the weekend. Into Monday and temperatures are still a little bit on the low side, sevens or eights there in southern and central regions and a little bit, a little, a little bit lower in the north. So all in all quite a chilly picture being shown but I've mentioned there is quite a lot of uncertainty about how the synoptics of this will develop after the initial cold plunge, which is shown very, very clearly here on the MOGREPS G Ensemble. So it's showing temperatures at about 1500 meters above sea level. The runs there tightly packed, indicating good agreement about what's going to happen. One or two of them are starting to diverge at this point, but it's really as we go forwards that a range of solutions becomes more apparent. A good deal of uncertainty towards the end of the first week about what upper air temperatures are going to be like, what sort of air mass will be over the UK. It's all to do with the positioning, I think, of that area of high pressure. Rainfall. Much drier than has been the case recently. These are the five-day 
aggregate forecasts from the ECM and GFS models, single figures, low single figures, particularly across England and Wales, wetter in the far northwest. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day uh, forecasts, still pretty dry across large parts of the country. Some high totals there in Western Scotland on the ECM chart, that's one on the left. All in all though, a much drier picture looks like being the case than it has been through much of the autumn. So, as we head towards the end of the first week, had the deterministic models compared to each other? Here is the GFS, Tuesday the 28th of November. High pressure centred close to the UK, low pressure there to the northwest. But at this point, the, the cold upper level there is to our south and our east. But as we saw with those two metre temperature forecasts, it could well be still quite chilly in the UK due to the high pressure influence. The Canadian model at the same time has high pressure just to the west, centre just to the west. So it's a similar picture all in all. There are some differences there, of course, in the details. The ICOM, the German model, also high pressure here, but it's extending further northeastwards, really into Scandinavia, this cold block of air, still quite close to the UK. The European model, at the same point, differences here. One thing to note is that it's got high pressure to the northeast, just up towards the top left of the chart. Always an interesting location as we head into the winter months. But in terms of what's going on close to the UK, well, quite a messy picture. Maybe some rain there in the north, but all in all, it's, it's probably going to be quite dry across southern and central parts of the UK at least. Finally, the UK Met Office model. This is different. It's got high pressure really centred further south, mostly dry at this point, but the area of low pressure there to the north painting quite a different picture to the ECM model, just skipping back to it, which has high pressure centered to the northeast, the, which is potentially going to lead to cold conditions down the line or open up the opportunity for them. But the, as I say, the Met Office model has that deep area of low pressure scooting eastwards to our north. Quite a big difference. But taking them all together, it looks like towards the end of the first week, high pressure at least will be having influence over the UK, keeping quite a lot of dry conditions, temperatures probably remaining on the low side. The greatest risk of rain in the northwest, but details varying quite a lot. So how do things develop as we go through the second week? And I've already highlighted there, there's quite a lot of uncertainty about the way uh, it will develop towards the end of the first week, hence forecast confidence for week two is a low. Here is the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air temperatures across the top. Most of the individual runs are below the thick black line, which is the 30-year norm, so below average. But towards the very end there, you can see the purple line, the ensemble mean, starts to return towards a thick black line and eventually crosses it. So it's indicating an upwards trend later on, but that's, that's a long way off. In terms of rain, which is shown by the number of spikes along the bottom here, there are not many there. So it's quite a dry picture, perhaps just increasing later on, perhaps more rain spikes towards the very end. The snow row, since I've been talking about the possibility of cold weather, well, it remains low, a maximum of two there, I think, through the second week, and the highest value it can take is 33. So what it's showing is the number of runs in the ensemble model, which are forecasting snow to fall on a given day. So two out of 33, well, you make your own decisions, but I wouldn't be taking my chances on that one. The two metre temperature data tables now, I've updated these because people have been asking me if I could show the frost risk for the north as well as the south. So what I've done is I've put the maximum temperatures across the top and the minimums along the bottom. This is for London. What we can see is there's a lot of light green and quite a bit of dark green there early on. Those are runs going for between a 1 and 5 Celsius for dark green and 6 and 10 forecast maximums. So it's quite a chilly or rather cold picture early on, which has been favoured. 
as we go through the second week, there'll be amounts of yellow increases. Those runs going for between 11 and 15 Celsius, significantly milder. So they, that, that possibility starts to rise later on that milder conditions will be returning. In terms of the frost risk for nighttime lows, lots of dark green through the first half of the second week, especially a little bit of blue there. Blues indicate the chance of an air frost because it's below 0 Celsius, but dark green, a ground frost being quite likely between 1 and 5 Celsius, as I said. So a significant number of those runs would be cold enough to lead to ground frost. Also, remember that this is the London area, so if you go outside Greater London, temperatures will be a little bit lower, a greater chance of frost. Up to Manchester, the air temperature profile is very, very similar. In terms of rain across the bottom, well, there are a few more spikes here than there were on the London chart, but still, it looks like there should be a reasonable amount of dry weather. The snow row for the Manchester snow fans, it's slightly more optimistic than London. A total there, the highest total there of four, but as I said, four out of 33, I wouldn't be betting on that one either. Two meter temperature data tables for Manchester, similar to the London ones, slightly lower maximum temperatures and slightly lower minimum temperatures. So a higher chance of frost, but not a great deal of difference there with the uh, charts for London and the South East. Up to Glasgow, and there are some differences with this one because initially the ensemble mean there is actually a little bit above a 30-year average. So it's, it's suggesting that milder air will be returning particularly across the northern half of the UK just at the start of the second week, but then it dips, the ensemble mean dips, and it stays below the 30-year average through the rest of the period. So there isn't really that warming trend which was apparent on the Manchester and London plots later on through the second week. Now, with that said, if we take a look at the rain spikes across the bottom, not very many early on, but lots of them later there. So a, a growing chance of rain as we go through week two in the northwest, and it really it ties in with some of those deterministic rainfall aggregates which I showed earlier on with the wettest conditions in the uh, in, in western Scotland. The snow row, not particularly exciting even this far north, although at the very end there it does climb to seven out of thirty three. So, but even that's a relatively low chance of snow falling. And just a reminder, the snow row doesn't suggest that the snow is necessarily going to accumulate. It could just be a few flakes mixed into a heavy shower or outbreak of rain, for instance. The two meter temperatures for Glasgow, similar in many ways to the London and Manchester ones in terms of the trends. So perhaps, as I've indicated, not as cold at the start of the second week, but the amount of dark green increases through the first few days, also a little bit of blue there in terms of frost, an ongoing chance. So quite a high chance of frost in the north of the UK through week two. Rainfall through this period using the data from the ECM ensemble model, the percentage chance of five or more millimeters of rain falling on days eight, nine, and 10. Lots of light shading there in central and eastern parts of Britain. A low chance, so predominantly dry conditions have been favored through this period. But the orange shading there in the northwest of Scotland is pointing towards a much greater chance of significant rainfall. Moving forwards to the 11, 12, and 13 day charts, the distribution of rain is very similar. Um, an increasing chance, I think, of rain becoming more widespread in the northwest, and that fits in with the Glasgow GEFS plot, which I was just discussing. Still a significant likelihood of dry conditions in eastern parts of Britain, central and eastern parts of England. Here's the GEFS 10-day mean surface level pressure plot. It's generated by averaging out all the runs in the ensemble, suggesting that high pressure will be close to the UK. But 
here, uh, here is the postage stamp plot. So the previous chart was generated by averaging out all of these runs in the GEFS model. So December the 1st, the first day of the meteorological winter. It's very, very difficult to draw many conclusions from this other than to say that a lot of the individual runs have high pressure influence in the weather across the UK and that in turn means quite a high likelihood of dry conditions and it fits in with what I've been discussing. Possibly chilly during the days and, and, and an ongoing chance of night frosts but much will depend on things like cloud cover and the strength of winds but all in all it looks like a relatively quiet period of weather. Maybe quite a seasonal feel to the start of a meteorological winter perhaps. The mean surface level pressure data table for York, so we're going through week two here, suggests that pressure may be dropping or at least there's a greater chance of areas of low pressure coming into play which is shown by the increased amount of green shading. The blue indicates very very deep areas of low pressure but only a very small number of runs are falling into that category. All in all High pressure looks likely to be dominating through the first few days, then things become more uncertain, more mixed towards the end there. But of course, at this range, that is often the case. Just quickly taking a look at some of the Northern Hemisphere views from the deterministic models for the start of the meteorological winter. This is the European model, the UK here. The thing I wanted to highlight was high pressure there to the northeast, maybe as I suggested, having some influence further down the line. There's always that chance, but it's far from definite. Here's the GFS model at the same time. It doesn't really support the idea of high pressure to the northeast, although at this point it's high pressure is still close to the UK, but less favorable, I think, if you're hoping for cold weather through the first half of December. And finally, the Canadian global model. This one's closer to the European with high pressure there once more to our northeast. So there is some potential there if it's cold that you're hoping for as we head through the first half of December and of course towards Christmas. Okay, so to summarize the next two weeks, Week one, a change takes place through the first few days as a patchy band of rain clears southwards and colder Arctic air follows. Wintry showers could then affect the north and the east for a time. Also, frost becomes widespread and sharp in the north. Later on though, things become more messy and there's a chance of wetter conditions returning into the northwest. Some rain could extend southwards and eastwards, but amounts are likely to remain small. Week two, temperatures close to or below the average are favored, especially through the first half of the period. So there is a risk of frost. Towards the end of the second week though, it could turn milder and the chance of rain begins to increase. So, there we have it. Colder conditions, at least for a time, but not a specially cold, not like we saw in November, December 2010, for example, nothing like that. Nonetheless, probably quite a seasonal feel to things through the coming days at least. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, if you did, then please consider hitting the like button below and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And of course, stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thank you. Bye now. <laughs>